Hi, I'm Jan Garkey, and I'm with uh, CUNA, which is the tra Trade Association for Credit Unions. And um, my role is discussant, and as with previous discussants, I'm not going to discuss the papers. I'm rather going to talk about what I want to talk about, <laughs> um, which is probably a good thing for you because I'm not a researcher. Um, my whole career has been applied in various settings, um, for-profit, non-profit, university, and, um, and government. Um, and so I'm going to bring more of the practitioner's perspective to this, and I understand that this particular section is really focused on middle-aged consumer. So I want to kind of bring that to the, to the forefront with respect to the uh, financial services industry. Now, I don't know how many of you were at the colloquium a few weeks ago. Um, I was not, but um, my supervisor at American, at, uh, <laughs> American Express, at, uh, <laughs> that goes back a, a long time at uh, CUNA was, and so I talked to her a little bit. She has more of a research background, and I said, you know, what do you think about this middle-age consumer? And she was wondering if there could be a greater demographic slicing um, of the middle-age consumer, um, if that would be um, of interest. And specifically, she mentioned second-generation Hispanics. Are they different in their financial behaviors than their parents? Um, the answer to that impacts how we in the financial services industry speak to them and, uh, and how we reach them. What are the perceptions and the needs of the middle-aged immigrant popula population now that they're entrenched in society and in our country and own their own houses? Um, now, from the credit union perspective for this audience, what we'd like to know is does being a credit union member as a young adult or even as a child better prepare them to be financially literate and financially secure in middle age and beyond. We'd like to sort of make that connection. Um, and selfishly, how can we get middle age members, kids and grandkids to become members? Now, from the university, from the, um, actually from the pr practitioner's perspective, I'm gonna drill down my comments to three specific needs. Um, trust, simplification, and standardization where it makes sense. And I'm happy to say that as I listen to all these wonderful papers, um, you guys are already working on a lot of things in this area. So I, I, I'm very heartened by that. Uh, trust was a key factor with the financial uh, health checks. Getting clients to change the way that they um, uh, manage their finances required that coach to be able to effectively connect with those clients, right? Yeah. So trust was huge which raises the issue of building, how to build and how to measure trust better. And more importantly, building and measuring trust for different demographics. Well, the way to build trust with me as a middle-aged consumer is a lot different than the way to build trust with a young adult member. So I think we need to, we need to think about those different strategies. Um, trust is related to loyalty. And from our perspective, how can we keep middle-aged credit union members from leaving the credit union when they retire? Credit unions don't have a way to keep sticky relationships with um, middle-aged members once they retire, and that's something that we, we are very, very interested in. Would a higher trust level result in a lower no-show rate for those financial health uh, checks? So that the trust was a huge, uh, huge, huge issue there. And would a higher trust level contribute to actual behavior change? Or is lack of action mainly due to something else? And that brings me to my, to my second point, which is simplification. And I know uh, some of you have already addressed this, which I think is pretty cool. Now, as I read the paper about default stickiness, again, the practitioner in me wonders how we can make complex decision making um, a lot less complex, a lot less scary, um, and basically how to simplify this choice process. Questions, does keeping it simple really boost the likelihood of action and behavior change? How does the simplification process differ for different demographic groups? Are there specific hands-on activities like the calculators that were mentioned, um, uh, Judy's, or Jody's calculators? How does that boost the action rate? And what would, the choice pro what would make the choice process more user-friendly? Again, I think we have a lot more work to do in that area, which brings me to my third and final point standardization. Now, um, as if the CFPB doesn't have enough to do, here's another suggestion. Um, with the help of researchers, could there be some kind more of a, a standardized form, a standardized 
online interactive form tweaked for different demographic audiences um, where consumers can really compare apples with apples when they're making complex financial decisions. And I'm thinking about things like when I'm thinking about how to choose long-term <coughs> care insurance, when I'm thinking about the process of do I need an annuity, um, you know, what, what, how does that, what are the questions that relate to my particular situation? Can there be some kind of a standardized, almost standardized form that could be developed for this? Um, an online form that might incorporate, for example, if this, then that scenarios that folks can go to. Now that would be, again, developed by a credible, unbiased entity like CFPB and some other, some other folks in conjunction. But um, that credible, unbiased aspect to this, I think, would be something that people might, might uh, want to go to um, who are looking at some of these complex things and make it very simple. So um, the question is, would a standardized process or form tailored for different financial products um, really help simplify that decision-making process? Um, reduce information overload. We, there's so much stuff out there. Um, reduce procrastination and uh, de uh, definitely keep it simple. And I think improve trust for consumers who are otherwise frozen into inaction. And that's what happens with the default uh, issue. And also helps them you know, avoid making the wrong decision for themselves. Um, are there best practices out there that can be re replicated in this regard? Um, and I think that FinVis tutorial might be something to look at. How can we expand on this for the middle-aged consumer? And so basically those three things were what I wanted to touch on, the trust, the simplification, and the standardization where it makes sense. And I'll close by acknowledging that there's a whole lot of stuff out there, and I've been guilty over the past 25 years of developing even more stuff. So I think we need to develop less stuff, improve on what we've got, um, take a look at some of these best practices, and, uh, and, and realize that there's really no shortage of stuff out there, and I, I'm definitely guilty of, of adding more. Um, how many of you were at the colloquium a few weeks ago? Oh, I thought most of you would have been. Okay, um, I should have brought more copies of this, but Lois Kitch at the National Credit Union Foundation recently released a study uh, focused on financial capability across the nation. This is focused on what credit unions have done. And you can go to realsolutions.coop and either download the report or order a copy for free. So it's realsolutions.coop. There's a whole lot of really, really good examples in here um, of what's going on. She also touches on seven key, um, uh, uh, key things to program success. Integrating financial ed into every available touch point. Utilizing partnerships. Providing specialized tools and content for selected target markets. Providing multiple and varied types of tools and products requiring or strongly suggesting that credit union members complete financial ed and, con and uh, counseling in conjunction with getting specific products and services, which is, I think, uh, being done more and more with, with credit unions. You can't, as a young adult, in some places, get a loan without going through a particular education program. Um, and aligning program content with flex core competencies, more credit unions are getting involved in that, which is great and allocating and or securing sufficient resources such as grants. Those are some of the key um, uh, uh, program success criteria that we're finding out there. So again, if you want a copy of the report, um, uh, go to realsolutions.coop and you can download that particular. <laughs>